I'm Julianne DeLynn Hatton, and you're listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. This series will discuss the Prophet Joseph Smith and the authenticity of the gospel he restored. I'll be speaking with Michael R. Ash, author of the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Welcome, Michael Ash. Hi, Julianne. We'll be discussing a place called Nahom today. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, one of the strongest archaeological evidences for the Book of Mormon. Well, let's get started then. Describe what takes place in Nephi chapter 7. Well, this is uh, after the Lehites had traveled through the wilderness for a time, and uh, Nephi's brothers had returned to Jerusalem to get Ishmael, who was a, a friend of the family, and big reason why they brought Ishmael along is they had single daughters, and mm-hmm. they knew that, yeah, that uh, you know, Nephi's uh, brothers and them, they were, were going to need wives. And they reached a place, and, and this is uh, in chapter 16, where Ishmael died on the journey. And it, in the Book of Mormon, we talked about in previous podcasts that Lehi named the places that he arrived at, whereas this particular instance, after Ishmael died, they said that he was buried in the place that was called Nehom. So since Lehi saying it was a place called Nehom, he's basically indicating that th- this was already named by somebody else. So it was a known location. And this was unusual. Yeah, it, it was uh, unusual, at, at least for this part of the journey, because uh, there were so many things that the Lehites came along uh, that didn't have official names or names that he was you know, unaware of, that he gave them names, and that's traditionally how it worked among the Arabs. But this was a location that actually had a name, that there was a, a location that had a designation set by other people, and, and it was called Nehom. So let's fast forward to the ancient temple in southern Arabia that was excavated by German archaeologists. Yeah, there was a group of German archaeologists uh, several years back, and they had uh, found this altar with an inscription of it on the uh, altar for the tribe of NHM. And they've actually found a a couple of these uh, altars through the years. And non-LDS archaeologists have determined that this particular area was used actively um, from about 2,500 years ago to well over Lehi's day, and it was used during Lehi's day as well. And there was this tribe of people that was known under the name that was inscribed on the altar as NHM, and uh, these non-LDS archaeologists determined that the place would have been named after this tribe, NHM. So how does NHM become Nahom? Well, in ancient Hebrew didn't use vowels. And so there would have been vowels between the N, the H, and the M, and perhaps even following the, the M. And uh, we don't know what those vowels would have been, but we know they would have been short vowels. And Lehi didn't say he there was a sign written there for it. He says it was a place called Nehom. So it's what he heard is a place called Nehom. And if it would have been spelled uh, Nehem or Nehom or Nehem or however you put I's or E's or O's in there, it all comes out pretty much the same. And, and this was, of course, transliterated uh, into English characters by Joseph Smith. But it's a bullseye hit in the fact that the NHM does translate into a word that is pretty much Nehom. And it does refer to the geographical location in southern Arabia. Right, and that that's the important part of it, because, you know, we, we can match up similar words all over the world. You know, you can find something similar between an English word, a Japanese word, and a Chinese word, and a Russian word, and so forth. This, so this is not just a similarity of, of a word, but it's a similarity of a place name at the right time period and on a specific spot in the trail. And this is where it really gets fascinating, because the Book of Mormon tells us that uh, shortly after Ishmael died and was buried in a home, that the trail took an eastward turn. And that's exactly what we find on the Frankincense Trail here, is that this trail comes down, it gets to this area of Nahom, and then takes this eastward turn. And so it's not just a matching name, it's a matching location. And and the, the similarities get even deeper than this. The Semitic root for NHM means to comfort or to console. So if somebody's grieving, you know, that's what uh, uh, the, the word can be referenced to as consoling them. And uh, Nephi, of course, points out 
in uh, chapter 16 that after Ishmael was buried at home that his daughters did mourn exceedingly. And so th there's somehow mourning tied to this word, and that's, of course, what the family's doing as they uh, buried Ishmael. And we didn't find this out until much later after these scholars were doing digging around this area from Nahum, that they found that it had the largest burial site in all of ancient Arabia. And that roughly at about 600 B.C., which is when Lehi had left Jerusalem, that anybody could be buried there. N normally when he had tribes in uh, areas, it was kind of hands off. You know, this is my territory, my city, my location, whatever the case may be. And they didn't want outsiders there. But this was a common burial place that anybody could come and bury their dead. And, and, and sometimes even if they died on trails or travels, they would bring them to this place and bury them. And so it's just fascinating that this is, again, not just a, a location marked NHM or Nehom, and not just at the right place, it's also at the right time, and it's a burial location. I, I don't think we could get a better match geographically for almost anything that's that's uh, found in the Book of Mormon than what we found in Nehom. A lot of times critics say there's no archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon. This is it. This is a bullseye. Thank you, Michael Ash. Thank you, Julianne. Thanks for listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. I'm your host, Julianne Delin Hatton, inviting you to keep the faith. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book, Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Faith and Reason is produced by Tom Hatton with music courtesy of Arthur Hatton. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of Fair Mormon or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You can support this podcast by subscribing to it in iTunes and by rating it and writing a review. Questions or comments can be sent to podcast at fairmormon.org or you may join the conversation at fairblog.org.